Hi, it's Hazel. Welcome to my channel, Hazel and Aka Design. About um, a year or two ago, um, I created a couple of playlists for my channel. One was called um, Use It, Don't Store It. And the other one was called Saving Time in the Craft Room. Now the first one, Use It, Don't Store It, was my feeble attempt to try to force myself to not hang on to things, <coughs> excuse me, for waiting for that magical day, for just the perfect project, for just the perfect idea, uh, for the day when the planets aligned and I had my lucky green socks on. I don't even own green socks. So the odds of using some of those things obviously became pretty darn slim. So that was... A way to refocus my efforts and I and you know kind of get busy and whatever don't maybe go back to an idea as, as often as one should so that's basically what I'm talking about today see I didn't clean up my space very well um, it is September 23rd as I'm taping this and believe it or not, we have still not combined a single acre of our fields. Um, it is preying on our minds and on our moods. And, um, you know, obviously, if people have been farming a long time, you've seen, you know, you've seen this before and, and worse. But it doesn't make any, it make, does make it any easier to cope with it. Um, so I've been doing busy work. <coughs> now, if you saw um, one of my thrift haul videos, I uh, encountered this Holt Renfrew bag. And it just struck me as being really old. I have no idea if it is or not, but that's how it felt to me. So in an effort to use it rather than store it, I opened it up and I just wanted to show you some of the things I've done recently to try to um, use it up to the last uh, scrap and also knowing in my, knowing that, oh, at some point I'll be doing a uh, blue journal. So isn't that just perfect? So what I did first, maybe I should remove these things is I looked through my um, 12 by 12 paper. And I know I don't have much compared to some people, but I have way too much uh, for my liking. So anyway, I tried to find something that I thought would go reasonably well. And I think that's okay. Now, because I have a bin started for my um, eventual blue journal I just folded this in half thinking that you know at least that way it'll fit in the in the tray so there's that but I had more to the bag so I did another one uh, this is probably not as great a match but then I'm thinking okay kid live on the edge um live on the edge and enjoy mixing patterns and shades and tones and hues and so that's what I got there now I see that so of course I thought well I could just discard this is lifting though I could discard you know the gusset and the part that was glued and all of that but I shouldn't see what's happening here all this I can tear off as well so you know I'm not going to worry about this right now because of course it will depend on what this ultimately becomes will it be a signature page will it be cut up will it be the start of a master board blah 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 um, so again folded that for ease of storage then I had coffee dyed paper. Now I do a fair bit of dyeing, but I don't use the paper that much. So I thought, well, let's make a signature page and have this nice deep pocket. 
I folded back the edge so that it's reinforced and a little bit sturdier. And um, so I have that, which will keep together as well. I had another, whoops, another chunk. So I made a side pocket. Now, of course, these are not uh, decorated to any extent, but they're a good start. And they're allowing me to use up um, all the sizes and shapes of paper that I have. Um, anyone who knows me knows that I love paisley. So this is a piece of gift wrap. And this has been kicking around for quite a while because I was using it as a, um, oh, a, a sample, I guess, of, of how paisley actually looks. Like considering that I love the pattern, I've loved it for decades, I don't know that I've ever really set my mind to drawing my own paisley designs so that's why i had it kicking around but i thought okay who knows maybe i'll introduce some green into that eventual project so then i started using more pieces of the bag and i was working on a um, caroline's uh, cct 52 uh, challenge the other day and I had, this was a piece, uh, piece of a book page, and this was the sentiment on it. So I thought, well, that looks good together. So I began gluing these things down. Now, I didn't take the time to find another blue paper that would go. I thought, let me just do this. Let me use the bits and pieces that I can. Now, obviously, doing a collage with only two... Um, different papers is <laughs> let's just say it's challenging so i'm going to be fine just whoops just um leaving this in limbo knowing that at some point i will finish it off or i'll add focal points or whatever i did want to use these little zigzag uh teeny weeny bits so of course they had to be kind of as a top layer and hopefully they survive whatever um whatever else happens uh, to this now i guess i should it's not holding very well is it i just use glue stick but you know sometimes you need especially if you're concerned about getting your um table dirty or your mat dirty person doesn't get as close to the edge as they hope to so i'm just going to fold this how wide will this be oh i can afford to fold it unevenly and still oops not that far try not to really go wider than five inches because then you end up with problems sometimes. So this will still make this part readable. Now, of course, this is taller than, um, yeah, it's nine and a quarter. So I don't know what will happen here. Maybe this part will get turned up and become, anyway, that's not for today. And then the final thing I wanted to show you and I think I might have shown you this before. This is just an old binder. It's not a full-sized one. It's only 8 inches by 10. And it's a direct uh, stealing of an idea from Kim Newberg. Now, she uses hers, and that's what I'm doing as well, I filled it with a variety of papers. So it, it has these dividers. I added some grid paper, some, I guess, 11 by 14 paper that I folded, um, card stock, um, brown card stock, this marble card stock. And basically, and I don't think of doing this often enough, to be honest, is when I have scraps of paper and I don't quite know what to do, maybe it's the end of a long day in the studio and it's time to, to wind things up, I glue them down 
believing that they are going to be the basis for snippets. I uh, know, not snippets, clusters. So I'll just flip through a few and you'll see that most of them are just at the one layer stage. Now, of course, when the time, when it's finished and the time comes, I will rip or cut, I suppose, but probably rip each um, section out. And, um, and the good thing about this is that, you know, because it's in a binder, um, you know, once all of them are gone, it's gone, but if I just take one, the other three are still staying in place. And obviously, you only do one side. So, got a few of those. Then I had some of these rather ugly, I would say, component pieces from an El Cheapo junk or scrapbooking kit. By themselves, they're not very good, I have to say. However, it's just one layer. More of the same, more of the same. This is some ribbon. I had experimented with, not ribbon, this is ribbon, this is satin. Uh, I had experimented with some spray dyes and they kicked around here for weeks. Um, here, because of the color of the background paper, I used like uh, coordinating colors from a kid's book. Uh, nothing else there. This is a different kind of cardstock. Don't see anything there. Now this is saying a creamy ivory. These are, I don't know why I had them, but probably something thrifted that, um, again, I probably salvaged you know, didn't like what the person had done, took it apart, and so on. Now, this, um, any of these things can go anyway, depending on what you add to them next. Um, more of the same. Okay. Then here, more of that sprayed satin stuff. And of course, it was hard to figure out how to fold this paper so that it, um, so I wasn't throwing any of it away, but yet, you can see the folding isn't great there, but that's not a deal breaker either. Um, I don't know if I have anything else done on these. Feels like something here, okay. Book page scrapbooking paper and that is probably it so what I thought because there is white in this I thought I would do another one of these white pages and just lay down the last of these bits so let's quickly do that and again you know, if you if you decide to uh, start using this idea, you know that. Let's have a glue book here. Maybe if I angle this a bit, I'll have a place to work as well. You know what uh, sizes and shapes you tend to like, so. Sometimes the material, the scrap material dictates, oh, this one is almost empty. Um, sometimes the, the paper, the scrap itself dictates, you know, size and dimension and so on. But if you have a choice, I don't know, can I get one more out of this? Um, otherwise, you know, obviously cut or tear it down to your favorite um, size. Maybe if I go like this, I'll get every last bit out. And we'll switch to a new glue stick. And of course, clusters are needed in every size. Now these are even narrower, so I might have to, well, I could do something long, I could do something horizontal. I'm just gonna 
whoops, move my little flashlight around and hope it still does what it's supposed to do and lets me have this closer to. Yoy, 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 all the noise. Uh, let's me get closer to where I need to be. Okay. Uh, oh, here's a new glue stick. So, okay, let's use this one. Now it's got a tear in it, but hopefully it won't come apart while I'm gluing it. So I really hope that you are having weather in your area that's conducive to whatever it is that you need or want to do. Um, you know, we weather, I mean, obviously depending on how old you are, uh, you will have seen a variety of... Um, Maybe I should put these narrow strips on this narrow. Whoops. You know what? <laughs> Wouldn't it be better if I took this sheet out of this binder and I didn't have to worry about how it fits on my desk? Um, you know, uh, I think anyone of a certain age knows that weather and weather patterns and and extremes of weather and so on have really changed. I know certainly over the course of my lifetime that's been true. So obviously not everyone in my audience is uh, farming. Hopefully you, you love farmers and hopefully you hug a farmer every chance you get. But, um, you know, people are, are kind of reliant or concerned about extreme weather, whether they earn their living um, from that or not, or like are, whether they're earning a living is weather dependent or not. So I'm thinking here, maybe what I want to do, now these, they're, they're too, normally I wouldn't really want a straight edge like that, but maybe because it's too narrow, I'm not going to worry about it I've, if I start um, tearing the edge, then we'll end up with a little tiny half inch. and That may not be the best. Uh, maybe I should put this horizontal. So, no, let's do it this way. I'm not short of paper, so. I know that um, it, it's funny. We haven't... We still haven't had a killing frost. Now, some people think that that is what we need for this weather to smarten up and um, let us get on with this. It's like one step forward and two steps back. You know, you, you get some sun and wind, which is required for drying and ripening. And then... Um, you know, showers or actual rain. So it is not fun. Um, I guess it's better, though, that I cope with this concern in my craft room rather than um, out of control eating. <laughs> um, you know, that sort of that stress eating that sometimes some of us do or have done over the course of our lives when we didn't have better coping skills. So, okay, I think I'm going to just grab the bull by the horns here and throw these little guys away. Well, not that one because it's good because <laughs> it's a it's almost a square inch so I can justify keeping that one maybe I can do something small here I could do something there again these are 
Maybe I'm being goofy with this. Let me just refold this a bit. The only reason I folded it in the first place was who wants papers hanging out of their binder? But, um, you know, the, these additional creases nobody's ever going to know about. Did I? Oh, yeah, that little guy. And then we're calling it a day. And, of course, um, when the time comes, let's hope I have the presence of mind to to look into this um, book <laughs> and find what I've done and continue the decorating process. Okie dokie, my lovelies. And that is all I wanted to show you today. I do encourage you though, to see if you can end the day or end your crafting session by kind of, you know, that final cleanup. Um, and I, I know it's impossible. And I know it, it depends on how much a person has taken out of their, their um, you know, how much you've pulled out to use that day or for that project. But it would be really great if we could all work towards um, not leaving too much of this detritus uh, overnight, uh, over weeks on end, <laughs> over months and years. So again, it was uh, the starter clusters, some 12-inch papers that will probably become either signatures or card bases and then uh, smaller signatures as well. So thank you so much for joining me, and I hope this has given you some idea about what you might do to help reduce some of the, the hangover clutter on your desk from day to day. And, um, yeah, and please, for the love of God, stop doing rain dances. We need some hot, dry weather. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.